You can hear us just fine, Mayor? I can. All right, thank you, ma'am. I believe we're going to start around 930, so just hang tight. Everything that's going on. Hi, Betsy. Good morning, everybody. Howdy. Yeah, I'm going to photobomb you, Betsy. And uh, today we mark the next stage in our fight against COVID-19. You know, back in March, we began to place restrictions on businesses. We closed certain businesses. Uh, in April, the governor kind of issued statewide orders that, um, that affected everyone across the state. And then around the end of April, uh, he began to loosen that and began to what he called reopen Texas. Uh, what we've seen since then with the Memorial Day, with the uh, graduations and with the summer, is we started seeing our numbers begin to, to ease up. Today, we crossed the landmark of 10,000 cases. We're almost at 10,400 cases. Um, in the last seven days, we have added 2,277 cases. In the last seven days, uh, and the seven days prior to that, we had um, basically had 1,279 new cases. So in just the last two weeks, we have seen a 52% increase in the number of COVID positive cases within Tarrant County. In that same two week period, we've seen the number of folks in the hospital move from 204 to 342, a 67% increase. And in that same two week period, we've seen the number of folks who've passed away as a result of COVID-19 go from 191 to 218, and that's a, about a 14% increase. Uh, we know uh, we've got coming up the 4th of July holidays. We know we have people going on vacations, getting out, uh, going to camps, doing any number of things. And so uh, in, a, in an effort not to have to go back to the restrictions of March, not to have to close down businesses, because that is really our last uh, alternative to this. Uh, what we're going to do is we believe that masks are our best alternative at this time. 
Uh, so because of that, what I'm doing is I will sign an order today that will become effective at 6 p.m. tomorrow. Uh, and basically what that's going to do is for businesses or for any entity that are providing services uh, for the public, then we're going to require that all of the employees as well as all of the visitors wear masks. Um, for outdoor gatherings, what we're going to do is the governor earlier this week moved the number for outdoor gatherings from 500 back to 100 and said that the local officials could uh, implement further restrictions should they choose. And so what we're going to what we're going to do here in Tarrant County is to say that if you're in an area that is open to the public and you look around and you estimate that there's more than 100 people, we want you in a, mar in a mask. Now, to be very honest with you, what I strongly want to recommend to everyone is if you leave home, put on a mask uh, and not worry about, you know, those folks that are around you. If you're, in a, if you're in a park or you're in some place like that, you're not wearing a mask, you may be asked to leave that area. Uh, so again, we're, we're wanting, this is, we feel like is the next best step. Uh, and I've got a lot of folks here. We, you know, again, as I've said before, we or I don't do things without really having an opportunity to talk with folks. We've talked to folks from public health. We've been in consultation with them. We've worked with uh, Tarrant County Medical Society. We've had conversations. We had a conference call yesterday with our mayors. Uh, we've um, and we've been talking with them on a regular basis, as well as our hospitals and our hospital CEOs. And I've also talked with a number of businesses this week. And uh, it, it's funny, several of them have said, please, please uh, put this order in place so that when someone does come into my establishment, I can say, I'm sorry, but uh, you're going to have to wear a mask if you come in. So uh, we're going to do this order at this time, and it'll be effective again uh, Friday, June the 26th at 6 p.m., and it will run through August the 3rd, which is a Monday, at 6 a.m. So we'll get through a weekend before we begin to do that, and we can look at that at any point in time along the way, modify it, um, either extend it, or if, if things really turn positive, then we may be able to, positive is not the right word, <laughs> but if, uh, if, you know, if it gets much better, we can always pull some of these, these restrictions down. Uh, at this time, I'm going, I, we've asked, uh, well, the medical society said, hey, look, we really want to tell you how much we support this. And I said, well, good, stand behind me. <laughs> um, and they were right on the spot to do that. And I'm going to ask Robert Rogers, uh, who's an allergist here in Tarrant County, to, and re is going to represent the Tarrant County Medical Society today. Um, I also found out this morning that we are fortunate to have uh, within Tarrant County this year the president of the American Medical Association, Dr. Susan Bailey, who is also an allergist in, uh, in this area. In fact, I think her and Dr. Rogers are partners. Uh, but I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Rogers to come up first, and then to follow that, I'm going to ask uh, uh, Dr. Bailey to come up and make a few comments. I thank you, Judge. Uh, I appreciate your willingness to make this difficult decision. Um, we've learned a lot in the few months since this pandemic started. And one of the things that we've learned is that wearing a mask is one of the most effective tools we have to suppress transmission of the disease. There's been a lot of controversy over this, but the, the data, the scientific data is clear. If we all wear masks, we prevent infection from going from one person to another. This virus doesn't care anything about what we think. The virus wants you to get into your body and replicate itself and then spread. And it's our job as a community to do what we can to pr protect each other. We have very few tools, and you've heard all of them. Social distancing, good hand hygiene, wearing a mask, don't go out unless you need to. So we've learned some good things. There was a great story about a couple of hairdressers, I think in Missouri, who had positive COVID tests and had cut 140 clients' hair. Both the hairdressers and all of the clients had masks, and there was not a single case of disease in the people who had been treated. 
There's another story of Florida where women who had been very careful in social distance and stayed home finally decided they'd had enough. They went to a bar one night, 16 friends, all 16 became infected. They were close together. They were not wearing masks. Wearing masks is important. They're safe. There are also some fears that I don't really understand how they come, that you could somehow get oxygen deprivation or carbon dioxide poisoning. Uh, my friends who are surgeons wear masks all day long. There are people in paint shops and industrial settings that wear N95s all day long, and they're fine. So wear masks, be a good citizen, be a good friend. It's a compassionate thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. As the judge said, I'm Dr. Susan Bailey. I'm president of the American Medical Association and an allergist here in Tarrant County. Um, I have been talking to folks all over the country since I became president, <clears throat> preaching this message, wear a mask, Stay home if you can, stay six feet apart if you can't, and keep your hands clean. Um, I've heard some concerns of people saying, well, y'all change your minds all the time. First you said don't wear a mask, and now you say to wear a mask. Um, you really don't know what's going on. Well, actually, we've been following the science, and I think that's important for everyone to understand, is that this needs to be about science and research and not about emotion and politics. Early on, we did not realize that there were a lot of people walking around that had COVID-19 that were spreading it to others and had no idea they were sick. And when we realized that, we changed our recommendations and said, you know, it's best if everybody start wearing a mask. And now we have even more research and science to show us that wearing a mask in public, washing your hands and keeping your distance is truly effective at stopping the spread. I think it's important to remember that uh, back to business doesn't mean business as usual. We're going to have to do things differently for a while until we get this very deadly disease under control. So wear your masks, um, we support that entirely, uh, and stay safe. Thank you very much, Dr. Manley. Again, we've been communicating uh, with all the cities. Uh, a couple of the mayors are here um, this morning. A couple couldn't make it. A couple are under quarantine, and we're going to hear from one of those in just a few minutes. Uh, but uh, we've got support. In fact, on our call, there wasn't a single individual who spoke out against the order of putting masks in place. Uh, I want to recognize Ken Shetter from Burleson, from Mayor of Burleson. I'll ask Ken if he's got any words he'd like to. I'm just surprising you on this. So. <laughs> but I figure as a politician, you'll be able always to have something to say. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I, I just want to say thanks to uh, uh, Judge Whitley for the leadership here, and thanks to, to the medical community. Uh, I, I had a discussion with someone on social media yesterday that said, I don't care what you think, you're a politician, what do the doctors have to say? And now I'm, I have some uh, great references that I'm going to put out there. Uh, but in, in our community, just like every other, uh, we're seeing our numbers explode. One of my biggest concerns is that for the first time in the city of Burleson, we have an issue with testing capacity. So we, we have to, um, you know, we have to take some extra measures uh, to get this thing under control, particularly with the 4th of July uh, holiday coming up. And I, I guess the other thing I would just add, uh, I represent the fact that it's not just the big city mayors that are in support of this effort. Uh, I can confirm what Judge Whitley said, that on our call yesterday, there wasn't a single mayor uh, that was opposed to this action. And in fact, interestingly, there was a group of us that had started talking earlier in the week and said, uh, as mayors, we think maybe it's time uh, to take some action. And uh, uh, we all developed some consensus. And when the call was made to Judge Whitley, he was already exactly where we were wanting him to be. And that was a very short uh, conversation. So it's nice that we're all getting there together. It's not just the big cities, it's the big cities and the little cities, uh, and, and we all share the same message, which is please, for the love of God, put on a mask. Thanks. At this time, I want to call upon Jeff Williams, our mayor of Arlington. Jeff, what comments you have? Thank you, Judge. Well, we're frustrated, we're tired, we're ready to get the virus gone, aren't we? Do we want to go back to stay at home? Do we want our businesses to close? No. Do we want to have require masks? No, we don't want to, 
but we have to. Dr. Rogers, a very respected physician right here in Tarrant County, is sharing that with us. And then Dr. Dr. Bailey, who is president of the American Medical Association, again, right here with Tarrant County and a citizen here, but also of national stature, is sharing with us that the way to fight this virus is to wear these masks. In addition to that, they armed us with social distancing and hygiene. We have to fight this virus. It isn't gone. And then we also have to know that people are hurting. Those who are getting the virus, those who are losing their businesses, those who are losing their jobs, those who are losing loved ones, we need to come together here in Tarrant County. We need to show that we are better than that. Let's not have the rhetoric of, of revolt against the mask because that is the worst thing that can happen here. We have got to come together and say, hey, for my neighbor, for my family, for me, I need to be wearing that mask and paying attention to it. Let's get our lives back and let's figure out what we need to do there and let's continue this fight against the virus and let's do it the Tarrant County way by coming together and caring about our neighbors. And let's stop the rhetoric and let's just say, hey, let's do it. And then the last thing I'll say is think about what we're talking about. We're talking about wearing a mask that may not be the most comfortable. Uh, it, it inconveniences a little bit. But think about the result. We get rid of this virus. Uh, we get it under control because right now we are very much faced with our hospitals could be overrun uh, here in a very short time if we don't do something now. So our mayors yesterday and in, in talking about this with the county judge, we all said, hey, we have no choice. We have got to protect our citizens. We are put in this position. We have studied, we've consulted the best professionals there. And please listen to what was said by Dr. Rogers and Dr. Bailey. They are true professionals that know what they're talking about. These masks do work. We need each one of you. Let's come together here in Tarrant County and once again, show the country that we care about our neighbor, we care about our families, we care about our visitors that are coming here. Let's wear these masks. Thanks, Jeff. And now from uh, the comforts of her home for the second time, uh, we have the mayor, Betsy Price, from the city of Fort Worth. Betsy? Thank you, Judge. Thank you to my fellow mayors and the doctors. Good morning, everybody. And yes, I don't have a mask on because I am in the comfort of my own home, and you don't have to wear them in your home unless someone in your home is sick, and then you should wear them. You know, this is critical in our fight against COVID. This is the right next step to take. We want to be clear, the mayors, the doctors, no one wants to overburden businesses that are barely hanging on. No one wants to inconvenience our citizens. But we also want everybody to be go able to go back to school in the fall, back to some semblance of normal, no matter how you define normal, as fall begins to come. We've been struggling, watching our cases climb. We tried the voluntary compliance campaign, and folks, we just weren't seeing it. We were getting much lower acceptance here in Fort Worth and in Tarrant County. I know Jeff and Ken had that in Burleson and Arlington. So we need your help. We need you to follow these orders. We need you to mask up. We'll start a campaign to try to re educate everybody, all our residents, all our businesses. Fort Worth now, the Chamber of Commerce, other organizations will make masks available. If you don't have them, the businesses will have some on hand. And they'll have a sign reminding you. You know, we know masks in the Texas heat as we head into July and August. They're not comfortable, but you get used to them pretty quick. And you really are going to have to wear them if we're to get our economy back open. This order won't last forever, we hope, and we can turn the curve on this. So I'm asking all of you to do your part. Stay healthy, and y'all mask up. It's critical for us. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, I know, Thanks, I, I know our, our public health director, Vinny Tanasia, was I, earlier, I think you weren't gonna be able to make it, but I noticed that you snuck in the room here. I can't say enough about Vinny and his team and what they have done since this 
first started back in early March. Uh, well, really, even before then, and they have been uh, they have been just fantastic. And I really, Vinny, I want to thank you. I want to thank your staff, and please carry that message back to them about how much we appreciate all the hard work. Because I know many of them hadn't had a day off yeah. since that time frame. So, Thank is you. there anything you would like to add at this time? Uh, just real one thing. Again, you know, a lot has been said, but th the only thing I want to remind people that masking is a tool. And it's time to use all our tools in the tool bed. And as you heard, uh, you know, others say that social distancing is still important. And if you can stay home, it's still very important that if you can, you know, I understand if you have to go to work and put, you know, food on the table, we understand that, wear a mask. But others, if you can stay home, don't go out for leisure, right? I mean, you know, make a wise choice. Uh, and if you're going somewhere, stay six feet away from others. Uh, and those are really the key things. Masks will help if you maintain the social distance from others. And then again, staying at home is still the best policy. And that's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Vinny. So in closing, join the team. Let's all start wearing the masks. Uh, let's, you know, let's see if we can't beat back this COVID-19 and get back to as close to normal as, uh, as we possibly can. Uh, and with that, I'm going to uh, close the press conference and we'll ask We'll answer any questions that y'all might have at this time. I see a hand going up back there, and then we'll. Jeff, we have masks. I'm Ben Russell with Channel 5. We, we're all in um, <laughs> How is this going to be enforced? And then and just a second question, because there's no doubt a lot of people paying attention to this who just flat out don't believe you. I think this is a terrible idea. So what level of concern do you have for that percentage of the population who thinks that you have no idea what, what you're doing with this? You know, <laughs> I've been accused of not having any idea what I was doing in the past a lot of times anyway. But, you know, what I would say is we have tried, as I said earlier, we've tried for the last three or four months to ask, to request, to plead, to beg folks to wear the masks. You've heard these people, respected individuals, medical professionals who deal with the science say you need to be wearing the masks. My wife had told me the story that you wrote of the two hairdressers who were both positive had done work over over 100 people and not a single one of them came down with the COVID-19 virus. So I'm sorry, uh, they're going to believe whatever they're going to believe, but we have got to try to find some way to, uh, to curb the growth that we're experiencing right now. Enforcement, you know, again, what, um, what we're asking is, first off, we're strongly recommending that anyone who goes out of their home have a mask on. We're saying that if you're in an area that is open to the public and you look around and there's over 100 people, or you estimate there to be over 100 people, you don't have to start counting. You know, most of those folks are going to run out of fingers and toes <laughs> before they get to 100. Uh, but what I know, GK is just saying, you just cannot control what he says. Um, but you need to wear a mask. And what may happen, you know, we're not going to put people in jail. But what may happen is you may have an officer or you may have someone come up and ask you to leave the area if you want to continue to not wear a mask. We had an, an instance a couple of weeks ago here in court where someone came in and we have, you know, we've kind of pulled it away from the six foot and pulled it in and said, if you wear a mask, then we feel like we can loosen that six foot restriction a little bit. One of the persons wouldn't, you know, wouldn't do it. I, want, I just walked up to her and I said, look, if you're not going to wear a mask, that's okay. You can sit here. You're here. But I'm going to have to ask and rope off a whole lot more seats around you so there's going to be a lot less folks who can come into the room. And so that's one of the things. Now, for businesses, if you're providing services, then what we're saying is develop a policy. And we're going to give them a sample policy or an example of a policy. And we expect that for all their employees and their customers, we expect them to be wearing masks. So their policy should say that. And then if, they're, if they don't post the policy, then we're gonna, we can find the businesses. Uh, I have said from the get-go, our goal in life here is not to write citations or put people in jail. It is to hopefully get voluntary compliance. And now we're making it just a little bit stronger, but we want people wearing the masks. I think we had a question, Lily, or? No, let's stop. Okay. okay. I have a town board meetings. Uh, during the 4th of July events, uh, like the parade in the Arlington, the public, so how will that be enforced? Will it be enforceable or not? Judge, for anybody 
asking questions. If y'all could repeat the question so people listening to the broadcast could hear the question. Okay, this particular question uh, has to do with Fourth of July events, parades. I'm going to ask uh, Mayor Williams to come forward. We mentioned Fort Worth too. We, uh, there in Arlington, we have been working with the state uh, there to come up with regulations and so forth to be able to do it. We also have a long parade route to be able to social distance. We will be wearing masks there along the route. And we'll have our emergency operations people scattered throughout the route there to, to ensure compliance. But we are continuing to monitor the numbers uh, here as we go and, and taking that into account uh, there with it. You know, it's an interesting thing right now because we are having to look holistically at what is going on because we also have the morale and mental health that is going on. And so we're trying to balance that, but we'll continue to take all of that into account. Now, we did move the fireworks uh, on July the 3rd from downtown Arlington and moved it out to the stadiums. And we're gonna be able to open all of the parking lots out there to easily be able to social distance. We've got a lot of room. All of the entertainment district parking lots will be opened up there for people to come in their cars and watch the fireworks, but there will be no activities like we normally do in downtown there on July the 3rd. So at dusk, we'll have quite a fireworks show in the entertainment district of Arlington. Judge, can you uh, answer what changed in the past 48 hours um, from when you said that we weren't gonna have any masks? We had uh, 500 and something cases to, uh, yesterday, and I believe 400 and something cases the day before that. Uh, so when we began to see those kind of spikes in the numbers, um, again, in collaboration and talking with all of the cities, with the doctors, with, it was just the time to act. And again, we've seen a big increase in the number of people in the hospitals. Now, I will add on the mass, there are going to be certain times when, you know, there are certain individuals uh, some that are uh, mentally challenged, some that just have uh, issues with their health about wearing masks. And we understand that. Again, our goal is not to throw people in jail. It's not to write citations. It's to get as many folks as we possibly can to begin wearing masks. And I, you know, I've heard so much talk, and it may have been Ken that mentioned yesterday, said, you know, we have laws against smoking in restaurants and in public places. We have laws about wearing seat belts. Uh, the, what we're doing here, and, and especially with the smoking, that law was initiated more for the other folks that are around than for the individual. And so what we're asking people to do is be considerate and respectful to the people who they are around and hopefully not spread this virus and then let it just see that ripple effect of growth. Uh, Anna. Judge, you mentioned that there could be fines. How much, what do you go up to? Well, I think the, well, the order says up to $1,000. The cities are the ones that have ordinance making authority, and so it would be left up to the cities to determine that if an ordinance is violated, uh, then what the fine would be. Uh, again, as we did in the last ones, what, you know, what we've said, if somebody really wants to get nasty about it, and really wants to get in the face of uh, an employer or, or a, a, an entity or the police, this at least gives them a tool by which they can uh, can react. Again, I don't think anybody can tell you that was going to loop. You, you've been very focused the last few months on hospital capacity, Judge. It's Still you, am. You, you mentioned that today, a 67% increase over the last couple of weeks. The, the governor today issued an order stopping elective surgeries and procedures in four counties. It didn't include Tarrant County, but do you think that that is going to be necessary anytime soon here? Luke, again, that's part of why we're doing this today because we don't want that to be the case. We still have, uh, I think around 1,800 was the latest report, 1,800 available beds. The hospitals are doing elective surgeries. It's critical that, um, that for the health of the hospitals, that we allow them to continue to do that. But as we begin to see those numbers grow, I know that uh, you know they're watching those numbers, and so are we. So this is one step, um, hopefully, in the path to not having to put further restrictions to close businesses and to absolutely make sure that our hospitals remain open for not only elective, but more importantly, for the emergent 
um, care that is needed by so many folks in, in Fort Worth and in Tarrant yeah. County. Judge, going back to the businesses uh, with restaurants, is there going to be any mandates or ideas on how people are going to sit down at the table and eat, or are they going to have to wear the mask while they're sitting at tables and just kind of... What we, yeah, I've tried. You know, drinking through these things are real hard. I'm just, I'm just going to tell you. It, it's, it gets real messy. But there's been a couple of times when I've got pretty close to trying that out. Um, what, is going to, what I envision happening is, as you come to the front door, at a minimum, what we're saying to the owners of those restaurants is make sure that people have masks on before they come in. Uh, and then when they're set at the table, they can take the masks off. But if they get up to wander around, oh, I see my friend over, I want to go over and talk to him, or I need to go to the restroom or whatever, then we would ask that they put the mask back on as they get up and move around the restaurant. And that's kind of our, our thought process behind that. Same thing if you go to a hairdresser and you know, she's cutting the hair off of your ears, it's a little bit hard to have that mask on. So, or facials or different things along that line. So there are going to be times when you're going to need to take the masks off. And we understand that. But what we're just simply saying is the more we can get people as they're out and moving about to have masks on, we feel like we can maybe stop this spike that we've experienced now over the last, uh, you know, last several days. This is not a put fear in folks question, uh, but, but the question is, how much worse is this realistically going to get? Because it seems to be getting worse, right? And this is maybe a medical community question. Good. All right, let's take it. Um, if you've paid attention to this much at all, you've heard the word exponential growth, which is one person infects another, and then two, and then four, and then eight. So I am not a fear-mongering person either. But if we don't respect this process, things can get terrible. I think we all observed what happened in New York City. We all observed what happened in Italy and Spain. We have examples of what happens when this virus gets out of control. And we also know the tools to try to keep that from happening. So we really do have control individually. We don't have to listen to politicians. We don't have to listen to doctors. We can use our own common sense and logic and understand what it takes to suppress this. So it can get bad. Maybe a follow-up question since sure. you're there. Um, as, as a member of the medical community, how frustrating is it for you personally and professionally to have to say this again and again, and maybe to fight against the stream of people who don't want to believe or don't yeah. want to participate in how, how personally frustrating is it? Well, okay, I'm going to answer that two ways. One is that as a physician, any of us that uh, deal with patients, we are familiar with the idea that we need to continue to reiterate <laughs> things that are healthy for people to do. Stop smoking, exercise, eat healthy. All those things that we do all the time, it is tedious. I'm not going to say it's not, but it's important. We understand it's important. I guess what frustrates me the most is that recently there seems to be so much willingness to say science doesn't exist, science doesn't matter, not trusting people that have spent their lives studying and understanding these processes, that is actually quite frustrating. And, but you know, that's just the life we're in right now. And our job is to continue to present scientifically sound, reasonable data to try to convince all of us to do the right thing. And I don't want to dominate, but I just have another on that subject, because I, I hear a lot of people, friends who said to me, well, well, but they said this before, and now they're saying this, and make up your mind. So to someone whose thought process works that way, what, what would you want them to consider? Well, one thing is we physicians used to bleed people to try to help improve their health. We don't do that anymore. We learn things over time. It's, I think it's staggering in my own mind. It seems like COVID's been around for years. This has been since early this year. We're in our seventh month. We're learning things quickly, and we're trying to present evidence to people quickly to know what to do. What is currently really clear is that we can markedly reduce transmission with masks. There's just no doubt about it. Small percentages of improvement in rep mask wearing can make a significant difference in where that curve's going up or whether the curve's going down. So we don't have to convince everybody. We have to convince a lot of people. One of the things I'm going to say also in this deal is unfortunately over the last month or so, this has gotten away from being a health issue 
or being an issue that, that deals with the science of the deal and has become a political issue. And that is so unfortunate. This is not a, a, a political issue. It's an issue of whether we're going to have respect for the folks around us, for our neighbors. Uh, if you look at the death rates for the folks who passed away in Tarrant County, I would guess probably close to 90 or 95 percent of those folks who passed away had underlying health conditions. Folks, you know, I, I can have a healthy young son that's up and just all over the place and doesn't have any problem, but if I have an underlying health condition and he brings that home, in all likelihood, I'm gone. And that's what we have to guard against. And that's why we're asking people, wear the mask. It's, yes, it's inconvenient. None of us like wearing the masks. But if we can save a life by wearing the mask and not take it home to someone, one of our relatives or one of just our friends, then, you know, what's that worth? Is it worth a little inconvenience? I sure hope so. Any other questions at this time? Yes, sir. Sir Mayor Williams, can you, can you talk about the restart of baseball and how this is um, going to fit into that? Well, that's still being figured out, uh, but needless to say, that's one of the many losses uh, here too. And of course, uh, you can't just look at the physical part of this. You also have to look at the mental part of it. And, and we hope that we can see good behavior uh, there to where we can have fans. But this is a startup. Dr. Rogers said it so well that we have got to use our tools. Well, if we don't use our tools, there's no way we can be looking at any kind of recreation or anything if we don't use the tools that we have available to us. And then, yes, I'm very worried about the mental health and, and morale of our people. But right now, we've got to beat this virus. And so the schedule should be coming out uh, here tomorrow, I believe. We'll see that. They've been talking about July 23rd or 24th, but you've seen there's been very little talk about the fans. They are watching the numbers, too. Uh, they are paying attention to what is happening uh, here around the country. And uh, Major League Baseball there, it's been lost because of the negotiations between the owners and the fans. But what we have seen with the owners of the Texas Rangers and Major League Baseball, that they are working on very comprehensive plans there to help keep the spread from happening and to keep the players and the fans safe. So stay tuned, more to come. Can I thank you to make one little comment and then I want to ask Vexy and then we'll take one last question and go forward. I just, yeah, I want to say one other thing. As I, the last few days, I've been talking to a lot of different folks in my city uh, about where to go next and, and particularly a lot of business owners. And uh, one of the things that I've had multiple business owners tell me is that they have been trying to do the right thing and have their employees wear masks. It's become increasingly more difficult because this has become so politicized and has become part of some culture war that I didn't even know existed. And we have actually had many incidents of employees of businesses, uh, hourly employees that are being accosted and berated by customers for wearing masks to the point that there are, are uh, one employer told me that they had a teenage employee that just said, I can't do this anymore. I, I, I want to wear a mask, I know I should wear a mask, but I can't take this, uh, this berating. Uh, and then the, the other thing that struck me uh, much later than it should have this week is that uh, these frontline workers have been out there putting themselves at risk through this entire epidemic. Uh, they are some of the, the biggest heroes of all this, and they've been the last ones to be protect, protected. And so, I, I, and this has been kind of hard for me because I think this requiring companies to require their customers to wear masks is the most complicated part of this. It has the most uh, difficult enforcement issues, but at the end of the day, it's the only way that we really can uh, protect the people that have been uh, the most at risk uh, throughout this. And I, I'm reading more and more that uh, COVID-19 is disproportionately affecting uh, people uh, at lower income levels, and I think this is one of the reasons. So we really have to start doing everything we can to protect those folks. Betsy, did you have anything you wanted to? She's doing her
Now, just remind everybody, it's not comfortable, it's not cool, but COVID is not comfortable or not cool either. So do it for someone that you love and we'll get out of this before you know it. Thanks everybody. Okay, thank all of y'all. We'll stick around a little bit afterwards if you've got some additional questions, but uh, I wanna tell you how much I appreciate y'all being here this morning. Thank you. 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 Thank you.